Hi right, guys. It is a dreary day here in the end times in paradise in the Catskill Mountains. I think my plans for canoeing on Labor Day have been drowned here on Monday morning, September 2nd, 2019. Sort of the last day of summer or in the case of the Catskill Mountains, the first day of winter 2019 and uh, Oh well, since I'm not going canoeing, I guess I have plenty of time to bring you today's We Are So Fucked headline of the day. And uh, a couple of Alert Tribes members have already pointed out that we have a new Bible of the Apocalypse uh, out there. And I need to interview this fellow named Brian Walsh. But good old popular mechanics is uh, giving us a little peek into Brian's new book and with their headline somewhat tongue-in-cheek, I don't know if it is or not, which of these doomsday scenarios is most likely to kill us all? A disaster expert and a really fun guy at parties reveals how the apocalypse will come. Okay, so anyway, this is just a sample from the book. So what is this all about? The big one, that is the premise of Brian Walsh's new book, End Times, A Brief Guide to the End of the World in stores and on Amazon now. <clears throat> Walsh skips the small stuff. Yeah, skips the small stuff. Caution detected. Take precaution. And focuses on the things that might be able to end all humanity. Okay. Take it away, Brian. These sorts of global risks or threats that could plausibly result in actual human extinction or so much disaster that you would have a permanent downgrading of the future of the human race. Uh, quoting Walsh, we've never experienced anything like this. World War II, the Black Death, None of them really comes close to what we are talking about here, close quote. It is a fascinating and horrifying premise during an interview with Walsh, who has been a science reporter for 15 years, is an editor at Time magazine. We worked up a few scenarios and asked Walsh, what the chances of survival were for each one. A one score means we have a pretty good shot of living in some capacity, while a 10 means we are totally screwed. And so we're just going to go through a sampling of scenarios from 1 to 10, and of course the, no, the first one on the list is global warming. Global warming, which Brian on a scale of 1 to 10 gives an apocalypse score of 3. Of 3, with 1 meaning no problem, 10 meaning we're completely fucked. He gives global warming an apocalypse score of three. All right, take it away. What is, what is your reading of this, Brian? While global warming will quote remake the world, remake the world. Oh shit, Sherlock. While says making it hotter, more dangerous and harder to pay for our food, he does not see it as a harbinger of total death by itself. 
I think we have found the who the mysterious book hermit is. I think book hermit is Brian Walsh. Take it away, Brian book hermit Walsh. Quote, global warming does not seem likely to end us unless unless it continues in a really out of control way. Yes. No shit, Sherlock. Instead, global warming's danger according to uh, according to Walsh is that it is a threat multiplier. No shit, Sherlock. Quote, potentially it global warming or climate change could be a contributing factor to other effects where if you have a world that is in chaos to a certain extent due to climate change it might make conflicts more likely you could even have a scenario where an attempt to control climate change you meaning geoengineering ends up backfiring. No shit, Sherlock. Walsh brings up geoengineering, which he says is very important, but cautions, quote, if you try to reduce the amount of sunlight coming to the earth or to control temperatures and anything goes wrong, that effort is interrupted, for instance, by a war. You could get termination shock. Termination shock. And that would be really devastating. No shit, Sherlock. Time is a big factor for Walsh. Global warming, according to his uh, view of it, will occur slowly over decades. Quote, human beings are pretty good at adjusting to things as they unfold. Human beings are pretty good at adjusting to things as they unfold. But a geoengineering accident could be sudden. Quote, when things change very quickly, then we are really in trouble. No shit, Sherlock. All right, from global warming, what does he have to say about number, the story of artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence rising up and killing us all? One to ten, it gets twice the rating of global warming with an apocalypse score of six. And I'm going to be okay with this. Okay, take it away, Brian. Artificial intelligence is the toughest one to put a number on, Walsh says. It is certainly a very big risk if it's possible, close quote. Yes, a big risk if it's possible. AI bringing on the end times has scared people like Elon Musk, who in 2014 called it the biggest existential threat facing humanity. More recently, Musk has said that, quote, as AI gets probably much smarter than humans, the relative intelligence ratio is probably similar to that between a person and a cat. Maybe bigger. Close quote. Walsh agrees with Musk that there is a potential threat in AI, but he is not, but he is just not sure scientists can get there. Quote, it's entirely possible that the type of artificial superintelligence we're worried about here might just not be possible. There may be something in the nature of biological intelligence that we can't really replicate in machines. 
he points out there have been challenges in building AI such as car companies trying to build driverless cars hmm, have come to accept that the complexity of human driving will take a long time for AI to understand. But it, if it's possible, that's a different thing. Quote, it's very hard to imagine now you could control something that's so much smarter and so much faster than human beings. If an AI turned evil and decided to destroy humanity, Walsh predicts what's known as a fast takeoff, very quick action, too quick to establish a plan of fighting back. But there's also the chance that the AI might simply want to rule over humanity in some way as opposed to total destruction. Humans might just be completely irrelevant to its agenda, only facing punishment when there is pushback by us puny little humans. Walsh points to Earth today noting the large number of animals whose populations are under our control. Quote, that would concern me, he said. Okay, how about disease, otherwise known as some global pandemic breaking out and killing us all? Walsh gives this a score of two of two on the radar. Warning, warning. This was a surprise to me, said Walsh of his own low rating. On one hand, disease has killed more human beings than anything else, more than any wars and any natural disasters. At the same time, there's a certain natural evolutionary limit as to how a disease can develop. Uh, anyway, guys, I see I need to speed this up. And then he uh, talks about Ebola being good at killing, but not being, not spreading very rapidly. Uh, and then on the opposite of Ebola, you see measles, which are good at spreading, but not that good at killing. Uh, anyway, so he gives global pandemic a 2 out of 10. And if my AI idiot computer would let me move forward, okay, food safety. Food safety. He gives it the same as global warming, a three. And this is tied into number two, is one way disease could travel with ease is through food. Uh, you know, so what? The fact we have such a globally connected world is great in so many ways. Yes, uh, okay, food safety. Alright, don't forget the asteroid, which he gives a score of 2, simply because of the probability. Uh, quote, there is a reason to make a bunch of movies about them. Yes, uh, but when you look at it, really only the dinosaur, the dinosaur extinction was definitely caused by an asteroid. Uh, and how about this one for some hopium? <clears throat> there is no reason we could not develop a system to deflect an asteroid. Caution detected. Take precautions. 
position. Okay. So even if one does come, we'll just, you know, do a little cue ball. Okay. How about the uh, the volcano? Uh, and he gives volcanoes a six. Huh. Why does volcanoes get twice the rating of global warming and three times the rating of <clears throat> global pandemic. Quote, volcanoes are underrated as a threat separate from the ones humans could potentially cause. This is the biggest one out there. <clears throat> If you look back over those extinction waves, usually they had a connection to, vo to volcanic activity. The biggest one, <clears throat> the Great Dying, where you had 90% of life on the planet pushed to extinction, occurred because of a massive volcanic eruption in Siberia, close quote. Uh, super volcanoes essentially shut off sunlight where you have global cooling uh, killing us all. And one more. Aliens. Aliens. Apocalypse score unknown. Unknown. Quote, Contrary to all the movies you have seen, if there are aliens who can reach the Earth and are hostile, we are going to die. No shit, Sherlock. Uh, but of course, he does, you know, it's kind of like asteroids, this thing with aliens. Uh... It would be comparable to our to our military going up against a bunch of Stone Age hunter gatherers. Yes, it would be. But anyway, guys, we're gonna go from uh, Brian Walsh to uh, the French news service. I guarantee you, the single biggest threat to the planet nowhere mentioned in Brian's new book is the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. And uh, so I'm going to give the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative a 10 for killing us all. Uh, you know, I just interviewed this guy, Bill Lawrence, calling the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative the single biggest threat to the planet uh, out there, the single biggest threat to the planet right now that nobody is talking about. Brian uh, uh, calling it, uh, uh, not Brian, uh, Bill calling it uh, a much bigger threat than climate change. But in this story, the good old French news service talking about how China's Belt and Road Initiative alone, alone, could make the planet miss its Paris climate goals. No shit, Sherlock. Yes. Carbon-heavy development in countries that are part of China's Belt and Road Initiative could in themselves render the Paris climate goals unreachable according to a new analysis on the gargantuan global infrastructure project. No shit, Sherlock. The massive network of new ports, railways, roads, and industrial parks spanning Asia, Africa, the Middle East and Europe, and I don't know why he left off out the entire Western Hemisphere as well, will see trillions of dollars invested in new infrastructure across 126 countries. Uh, an analysis of the possible carbon footprint 
of the infrastructure development inherent in the Belt and Road countries said there was a significant risk of the initiative alone producing enough greenhouse gas emissions to derail the Paris climate goals. Oh shit, Sherlock. Uh, and I'm skipping through the, a lot of this. Uh, the analysis found that countries such as Russia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and Indonesia would need to lower their carbon emissions 68% by 2050. Uh, but of course, with the Belt and Road Initiative, uh, that completely throws that out of the window. Um, quote, you know, under, this is Simon Zydek, uh, one, one of the authors of this new report, quote, we have a business as usual scenario that says if you continue the way you are, you know, with this Belt and Road Initiative, then even if every other country on the planet, including the United States, Europe, China, and India, goes on its pathway, this is still going to blow the carbon budget. The Belt and Road uh, growth dynamic is so large that if you get the carbon emissions uh, wrong in a way, it does not matter anymore what anyone else does, close quote. So what he's saying here that, uh, you know, if, if we do not derail the, uh, the, the Belt and Road Initiative, uh, it makes no difference how much the U.S., China, uh, Russia, and India combined just going about their daily business with nothing to do with the Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, exactly. Uh, but then, of course, we have to have some hopium. The report also said emissions from all the BRI countries could be 39% lower if they just followed industrial best practices by employing greener technology. Yes. Uh, is that easy? Can we do it by tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock? Of course not, he said. Yes. But we have taken care to set out what each pathway could look like. It can be done. Anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap up this uh, We Are So Fucked Doomsday headline roundup here on Humpty Dumpty Tribe, and we're going to head over to Collapse Chronicles, checking in with Chris Hedges and Truth Dig with his article, The Last Act of the Human Comedy. But you'll have to come over to Collapse Chronicles to hear what uh, Chris Hedges has to say about the last act of the human comedy for this roundup. Get out there and enjoy this beautiful Labor Day while the human comedy still grinds on as the summer of 2019 begins to wrap up. Bye, guys.